All right, today we're going to be starting our quadratic applications. Um, with all these problems, you're going to, you should draw a picture of some sort and create equations. Once you have the equations, then you're going to have to solve them. And you can use any of the methods we've utilized to solve quadratics. So you can do factoring, um, solving with square roots. You can do completing the square, or you can do the quadratic formula, whichever one you prefer. I'm going to try to do two different variations here, just so you can see that any kind of option is good. I can talk you through why I put that method and why I don't. So our first problem here says a 5 inch by 7 inch photo uh, photograph is surrounded by a frame of uniform width. The area of the frame equals the area of the photograph. Find the approximate width of the frame. It's got a lot going on here. So first off, it says a 5 by 7 photograph. So I'm going to draw my 5 by 7 photograph. So it's five by seven, so it's gonna be five by seven. All right, real quick, we could probably find the area of that. Five times seven is 35 inches squared. So we know the area of that is 35 inches. And it's surrounded by a frame of uniform width, which means it's kind of in the center of our frame here. So here's our frame. Now we don't know what that width is, but we know it's the same on either side. So it's going to be x and x, x and x. All right. So they tell us that the area of the frame, and what they're talking about by area of the frame, they're talking about this. The area of this is equal to the area of the photograph, which is 35. So we need to find the approximate width of the frame. Now here's the issue, we don't know what x is, all right, so we can't just take the big area minus the small area and kind of go from there. Now if you think of this, we're going to figure out how, what our dimensions are here. Okay, so we know from here to here is 7, and both these sides is x. So we've got 7, x. So this is actually 7 plus 2x. Over here, we know from here to here is x, from here to here is 5, and from here to here is x. So we know that this side is going to be 5 plus 2x. Now we take the area of the large thing and we subtract the area of the photograph. That should leave the area of the frame. So the area of the whole thing would be 5 plus 2x times 7 plus 2x minus the area of the picture, which is 35, should equal the area of the frame. They tell us the area of the frame is the same as the area of the photograph, which is 35. From here, we've got to solve for x. So I'm going to distribute 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 2 is 10x, 2x times 7 is 14x, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Let's add like terms here. So I've got 4x squared plus 24x, and my 35s will cancel out on this side equals 35. Now I'm looking at this. Um, this one's not going to be factorable. All right, so if I move that 35 over, I'm not going to be able to find something that factors. So I'm thinking, probably not factoring it. Um, algebraic, I can't solve it using my square roots because it's an x squared and x. So my options are either going to be completing the square or the quadratic formula. Either would work here. Um, just to show you, I'm going to do completing the square just because these two numbers here, the 4 and the 24, are pretty nice numbers. So I think it won't be that bad. Um, so for completing the square, x's are isolated. I'm going to pull out that 4, that a value, x squared plus 6x equals 35. I'm going to add my b, divi b divided by 2 value squared to both sides. So b divided by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Over here, I'd have to add the 4 times 9. So I've got 4x plus 3 squared equals 71. Divide both sides by 4. Take the square root. Square root of 71 can't be reduced. The square root of 4 is just 2. So I get x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 71 over 2. Now, since this is a real life problem, they want the approximate width, all right, which means we can use decimals. We've got two answers here. We've got the negative 3 plus and the negative 3 minus. Now, realistically, we're going to rule out the negative 3 minus because you can't have a negative width. So in your calculators, you're going to type in negative 3 plus radical 71 divided by 2, and when you do, you get, oops, 
you should get x equals 1.213. So I do want you to round three decimal places for me. All right, another problem here. The sum of the numbers a and b's, sum of the numbers of a's and b's on a math test is 23. So we know the number of a's plus the number of b's is 23. There are more b's than a's. And the sum of the squares of the two numbers is 277. So a squared plus b squared equals 277. How many a's were there? So we got a lot going on here. So we have these two equations. All right, we can't use like substitution or elimination because we have a's and b's and a squares and b squares. So what I do is we're going to do some substitution. So I'm just going to solve for a over here. So I've got a equals 23 minus b. And I'm going to take that value and I'm going to plug this value into this a. So I'd have 23 minus b squared plus b squared equals 277. All right, if I write this out so I can FOIL it, 23 minus b times 23 minus b plus b squared. 23 times 23 is 529, negative 23b, negative 23b plus b squared plus b squared equals 277. So I've got 2b squared minus 46b plus 529 equals 277. I'm going to subtract that 277 over. 2b squared minus 46b plus 252 equals 0. I'm looking there and I see that all those numbers have a factor of 2, so I'm just going to factor out 2 real quick just to see if that makes it a little bit easier. Look at this one, I'm like, hmm, okay, let's see if I can factor it. So I'm thinking of the factors of 126. We've got 1 and 126, that's not going to get me to 23. All right, we've got 2 and 63, probably not. 3 and 42 won't get me there. 4 isn't divisible, 5 isn't divisible. 6 and 21, yeah, but that's not really going to help us much. 126 divided by 7 is 7 and 18. That won't get me there. 126 divided by 8 doesn't, or is 16. 8 and 16 won't, oops, 126 divided by 8 does not work. 126 divided by 9 is 9 and 14. I'm like, hmm, 9 and 14 would probably work there. So if I do minus 14 and minus 9, I get b equals 14, or b can equal 9. Now, here's where we figure out which one it is. This equation up here, it tells us that the b's have to be greater than the a's. So your b's have to be the bigger one, 14, whereas your 